Uh, bubbles be sapping my magic. I still have no idea what reference, what that like thing is referencing. That meme. I don't even know whether to call it a meme or not. Yeah. One thing that's annoying about these uh, blue skeletons, though, is that sometimes they like use their own downward stab attack, and thankfully they can't bounce off of you like you can with them. But it's still really annoying. So you just gotta be wary of that. You just pretty much just run under them when they do that. What? What? Dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've never seen it do that. It just like built up an impenetrable wall right in front of me as I cross. That was stupid. Yes, I'll just reset that, I guess. Because there's no getting by that right now. That thing was like six blocks high. Alright. Probably could use the jump spell or something, I don't know. You really just want to run through there right now. You can see that there's a pee bag there. But that pee bag is much easier to get back on the way back. Because we, we will have to backtrack pretty soon here. All right now we got a red iron knuckle. Yeah, how many hits will these guys take? I'm guessing about six. And... Oh yeah. Don't know how I knew that off memory, really. Oh, now we have level four attacks. Maybe it'll take five hits. Who knows? <laughs> you just ran right into that. All right. Oh, here we go. We'll get to test this out. Will it still take six hits or five hits now? It's always so exciting to see. Oh, four hits. Jeez. I didn't expect that. That's great. It's great to see like the, your damage perpetually increase with your with each passing attack level. Like, it, like, you should expect it to, but it's just nice to know that it actually has an impact on the amount of damage you do. Because, I don't know, it seems like it would be pretty easy for them to get by with it, actually increasing the damage you do. I don't know. I'm just talking out my ass here right now. Uh, yeah, but that item we just picked up, jeez, oh, I need to explain that. Uh, that was the power glove, I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it might be a... It's probably called something other than the power glove. Yeah, the power glove, it's so bad. Yeah, but the power glove actually allows you to break through these blocks. So that's pretty cool. That's how you get that pee bag much easier. There we go. Yeah, you want to wait until it, these columns are at least three blocks high before you stab right through. Otherwise, you're probably, like, knowing the luck of this game and the way this game likes to torture you, you're, you're going to stab right through them and then one's going to fall right on your head. And without that third block high to protect you, then you're just totally... You, there's nothing you can do. You don't have an upward stab to break them. Not at this point, anyways. Even with the up, upward stab, I'm still not sure whether you'll be able to stop the momentum of those things. This guy's not so bad. Drops a little bit of fire here and there. Uh, yeah, those guys take three hits now. That's crazy. <laughs> three hits on an iron knuckle? You'd never see that in, like, Ocarina of Time. Well, actually, you probably do. With, like, the big orange sword or something. Who knows? Or with the light arrows, hell. <laughs> mm, oh, this room, not this room. <sighs> I always forget about this room when I come to this palace, even though it's the most annoying room practically in the whole game. Because as you can see, there's like this one tiny little spot here that you can stand without getting hit. And you gotta time this jump just, just right, not like that. <sighs> and th there is a spot there where if you time it just right, you can uh, jump right in between without getting hit, or at least like you'll block it with your shield. And those and these Stalfos don't help anything. Mm, so you've pretty much just got to time that perfectly, and there's really no way to time it perfectly unless you've done that plenty of times. Which I have, so I'm kind of good at it. Not really, though. It's pretty much a tradition for me to kill this bubble, even with, when I don't have the downward stab when I come here, which has been every other playthrough except this one, I still kill this bubble every time. I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> just one of those enemies that you kind of gotta kill. You know, I gotta do it, gotta do it, gotta break the ice, gotta break the marmalade. Right, man. Yeah, that's another thing that's kind of cool, is even with, with these enemies that are like two blocks high, like these guys, the experience stealing guys, you can, if, even if they're in this tiny little corridor, you can still downward stab them, which is absolutely hilarious, because it's like you're stabbing them in the stomach with a downward stab. Which wouldn't make any sense, like, uh, perspectively. <laughs> See, it's just so silly. It's like you slide along their sword and it, it kills them. It's kind of funny. Jeez. Ain't I lucky they don't have two, mo two more experience points? Ah, uh, 
Oh, I was expecting to get that guy to drop another two experience points then. Increase my experience to 666 up there. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever had 666 experience in this game before. I don't know, I guess I'm not that much of a beast, but... Right, whoa! <laughs> I didn't expect to destroy that block. Yeah, I guess I gotta be mindful of that too, now that I have the, the downward stab. The power glove still applies to the downward stab, so you can, like, pretty much plow right down, sh like, straight down here if you wanted to. You definitely don't want to, though, otherwise you're in what I like to call the Metroid Paradox, where you're in a... We're here in a shaft that you can't escape from, because that ha happened like quite a few times in the original Metroid. If I can recall. Alright, dude, what am I doing here? <laughs> I was just waiting for him to make the first move. It's like chess, you know. Ooh, this is good. Alright, let's see here. Ooh, that's nice. Very, very nice. Now my magic and my life are pretty close to full each. Around the same spot each, too both in terms of levels and in amounts. Oh, and this hall is just swarming with iron knuckles here. Actually, I think there's only like two or three of iron knuckles, but still. Yeah, just two, but... You know, whatever. Oh man, did this guy drop 200 experience? Or give 200 experience? I don't even remember. Because if he doesn't, then I'm going to be kind of screwed on the experience front, because I'm only going to get like less than 100 experience for the from the crystal. Which is not good. It's not optimal at all. I need to use my shield here. What am I thinking? Alright. So what you want to do is like stand a decent ways back from this guy so that his projectile hits you. If you stand too close, then his projectile will just sail right over your shield. Jeez, why are these guys causing so much damage here? <laughs> Normally they don't, sh they don't shoot that much. Yeah, and then once he's fired off his projectile, you're pretty much safe to dab him in the head. This Voldemort looking guy. Dude! What? <laughs> <laughs> he just killed me. I think that's the first time that boss has ever killed me. It's crazy. Oh well, I was down to pretty low life, I guess. And don't be stupid, use shield earlier this time. Maybe I wouldn't have died if I'd used shield just like a fraction earlier. One hit earlier, maybe, and it would have done it. Yes, this guy is not overly complicated. I'm not sure of the name of this guy, though. Like, I know the name of the first guy, that's Horsehead. Like, how can you forget that guy? <laughs> It's Horsehead. Frickin' Horsehead, man. Not like the first boss in Zelda 1. He's completely forgettable. Aquamentis. But... Right, dude, just stab him and get it over with. Jeez. Sitting there taking hits, hits in the corner. Like a jackass. Ooh, I do get 200 experience. Awesome! Oh, you know why it's so awesome? Is because now I'm gonna get 14 to 92 experience from this crystal. Instead of, like, uh, just 92. Isn't that just awesome? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, my tunic matches perfectly with this Easter Island statue. Oh, look at that experience shoot up. That's another level, life level. Man, just two away from being full on those. But as you can see, our experience is actually... We need quite a large amount of experience for our next level, too. 2,000. Dude, I'm up to 20 minutes here. What am I thinking? <laughs> I was having too much fun in that second palace, and I just lost track of time. All right, let's get out of this swamp, I guess. Hmm. I kind of did that like a pro, I don't know. I expected to take at least one hit from one of the birds I normally do. Anyways, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're just wasting everyone's time now. No one wants to watch like 25 minutes of Zelda 2. Not in a single video, anyways. That'll drive a man insane. It really will. Alright, now let's get out of here. So I'm just going to go to this little safe platform over here, hopefully... Did I make it? Yeah, I made it. Sweet. And next time, I guess we'll... I guess we can actually just head straight on to palace number three, after I get the next magic spell, that is, of course. So, until then, thanks everyone for watching. This is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you and good night.